Welcome to the highlights of our post-show Q&A with the cast of Conor McPherson's The Weir. What's on stage editor Theo Bosenket is joined by Dervla Kerwan, Brian Cox, Ardell O'Hanlon, Ristev Cooper and Patrick McDonald. The, the Weir is an established modern classic. It's been called one of the greatest plays of the 20th century. And this is its first major revival, certainly its first West End revival since its premiere in 1997. Did, did that bring a added level of responsibility to taking it on or, or did you approach it with a bit of trepidation because of that? Brian. <laughs> <laughs> Good man to this, start with. This is not how the evening is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to constantly... That's what you get for wearing a tie. <laughs> I know, I know. I didn't realise. I'm sorry, I'm overdressed. <laughs> um, I think there is an element, of, not trepidation, but there's the element that it is a major classic and uh, we all kind of know Connor and uh, he's, a, he's a tremendous writer and this is a play that is in the, that sort of kicked him into touch as a writer in a way and yeah there was a, it was a great thing to be doing, I mean I, I was a bit trepidatious because I thought the produ first production was so good and it was such a great evening in the theatre, it was a remarkable evening in the theatre and it was such a success and, and my great friend Jim Norton played this role, he played Jack, so I was a little bit, you know, I was a wee bit nervous about it because I'd seen it and I'd seen it a couple of times actually, uh, both here and also in the States when it transferred to New York, so I was a little bit, yeah, I was a little bit trepidatious about it, I was certainly nervous if Jim was going to come in and see it, and he came on the first night, uh, but he didn't tell me he was coming on the first night. He was incredibly generous about it. So, um, yeah, but it, it, but it's, you know, it's a great play, and it's, uh, it's the gift that keeps giving. You know, I think it's, um, if you don't mind me jumping in there. Oh, please do. Uh, okay. <laughs> um, it's. I think a lot of us had seen the original, and uh, you know, I think we all loved it. Uh, but I think our production was was very very different from the start. I think and I think, you know, because of the, the the actors that were chosen, I think it was always going to be very very different. Now I didn't think a play could be as different as as this one is to that one. You know, it's just it's a different tone, it's a different energy to it. Uh, I I always felt the original was a kind of a, was more romanticized and more kind of gentle and more it was a kind of a, a more idealized kind of. Ireland, if you like, and this is more messy and more dangerous, and Brian is sexier. You know, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, Adeline didn't know you cared. <laughs> <laughs> I've wanted to say that for a very long time. <laughs> um, it's um, uh, also, of course, this production has moved from the Donmar uh, Warehouse into the West End. Was, was, was that transition a smooth one? It's obviously a very different playing space, a very different sort of atmosphere. Did that? Dervla. Uh, <laughs> I think I was uh, very nervous that um, the transition would be difficult because I, I personally got very used to the intimacy of that space at the Donmar. And also, uh, I was very nervous that lightning couldn't strike twice, that would we really, you know, would we be able to, to live up to the hype, the expectation? and our own expectation as actors. And uh, I, I think when we went out on the first preview and we got the reaction that we had, which I will never forget, it was extraordinary yeah. here, yeah. Uh, it was just magic. Yeah. Brian, you mentioned uh, several of you have worked very closely with Connor before. I wondered if you could give us a bit of an insight into what he's like as, as, as a person, uh, uh, both a, a man and, and, and a collaborator, um, and how heavily involved was he in in this production. Well, he, he was, you know, he, he's, he's very, you know, he's quite, he keeps his counsel, uh, Connor, but he's very, he's very much, the, the, he, there's a very strong acting side to Connor because he himself is an actor. And apparently, I've never seen him act, but Peter tells me he's actually quite a good actor, isn't he? Yeah, he is, yeah. And, uh, and he has got a great actor's sensibility. He just understands, his notes are always notes that help you as an actor. And also the great thing about him, too, is that he has no attachment to the play. He, he believes in making it new, and he believes... In fact, he's even added things. He's thrown from, from the Donmar to here, he's thrown little bits into the play, which were just have sort of spiced it up in a way. So he's incredibly ruthless with his own work. 
And it's it's a fantastic quality that he's got. He's not he's not precious about it in any way, shape, or form. He all he feels is just keep the stakes high. His one great note to me, and I will always cherish this note, was, you know, he he had this thing. He said, "Keep making deposits. Don't make too many withdrawals. Just make as many deposits as you can, and then you you can get one big deposit or one one big withdrawal." And that's it's a wonderful note because it means that you. You trust the play more and more and more, and then the moments that you need to find that moment of withdrawal, it's, it serves you brilliantly. He's a, he's an extraordinary, <coughs> he's an extraordinary writer, and he's and the interesting thing about him is that he he loves this play, but he doesn't. I mean, he doesn't quite. I mean, I'm sure he does deep down, but he's he doesn't see it as the great play that everybody else does. He sees it as a as a kind of step in his own work. And his other plays, I think, are incredible. I think the Night Alive, his latest play, is truly, truly fantastic play. And I think he just gets better and better as a writer. And he's, and it's very exciting. And it's, I find it a great privilege uh, to have known him for as long as I do, and, and see him grow into this really quite remarkable, you know, quite remarkable man of the theatre. Really. And uh, Peter has known him. Since college, I mean, Peter's been at university. We're going to make you talk, you know. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. He's a nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, over to the floor, as promised. Please do raise your hand if there's something you'd like to put. Yeah. We came to the second preview, and we're here tonight, and we, we've noticed lots of little things happening. How has that all evolved? It's changed very slightly, but it, it, it's changed. Is that the director? Is it you? Constantly well, we only had ten, it, ten days to rehearse this. Yeah. So even to though... put it back on its feet. put it back on... I mean, if you think there's a seventh mo- a seven-month gap mm. which from the Delmar to here, ten days rehearsal, it's hugely pressurised. And even though people say, well, you must know it, you've done it many, many times, that's not the case. And, in mm. it, and also, I think, with a seven-month gap, you have an opportunity to almost rediscover it again. Mm. So I would say what's happening now... Is, is a natural process, and it's a process to fight. I think it would be very easy just to come on every night and do the show. What happens is that we try and re, uh, or introduce ourselves to the characters every night. We're very taut, we're very tight, we're very together. I think that there's a real um, energy and uh, intention between all of us to come out every night and do it for the first time, and that's the secret. So of, of course each show is going to be different because it has to be, otherwise it would die. It has to be a living entity every night. We've got time for a couple more, so... Yeah. Want some advice, please? Um, when I get home tonight and when I go out later, um, I'm going to be asked, when I say I've seen this, what's it about? Can I work? sum up to me and help me? So I can say, well, actually, I spoke to some of the actors and they said it was about... It's about how we all carry our pain. Mm. Mm. I think it's about the need for stories in our lives which help to make sense of our lives. Mm. And, you know, whether that's to pass the time or, or, or whatever. But I think, particularly in the ghost stories, and, 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 I, and I wouldn't like you to go home and tell all your friends that it's just an, a bunch of ghost stories either. <laughs> but it's, it's, uh, these stories are all sort of mirrors for each of the characters where it's the only time they really get to examine their own lives. These people don't talk about this every day, but because of the intervention of Valerie, her arrival, it has brought something else out into the mix, and they end up talking stories which may or may not reveal something about their lives, and they may not even be aware of it themselves. I mean, they may not, you know, like in Jim's case, his story, you know, that may or may not relate to stuff that's gone on in his life in some way, and at the end of it all, he may not know what he said even. But he I needs think there's to tell a great a story. exchange of vulnerability by those stories, through those stories. And, uh, and certainly, I always feel that Valerie would never, ever have opened up and told anyone why she came here. Had the, these men tried originally to, in, the intention was to entertain her with these stories, but exchange the vulnerability that they didn't know, uh, you know happens throughout that story. And that enables her just to tell her crazy story. Mm. Absolutely, and very often when you reveal something about yourself, it's at the moment when you're least expecting to do it. Yeah, yeah it's like por- like these stories are a, are a portal to the subconscious. That's it. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it's, uh, 
I think I leave now. Well, maybe very they're a portal to the spirit world. I think that's the thing about Connor. He never. He's a great he never believer makes in magic. It like, oh, it's just a psychological thing. Yeah. I think I'm going to start getting angry looks from the wings uh, if I let it go any uh, okay. further. So I'm afraid I am going to have to um, end it there. So it just leaves me to say, well, a huge thank you to you, to, to you guys for staying and asking some great questions. Thank you. Thank uh, you. Uh, to the would-be tube strikers for not striking uh, <laughs> and letting everybody get here. Um, and uh, first and foremost, to, to you guys, the cast of the weird. Absolutely. <laughs> There's no dark like a winter night in the country. And there was a wind like this one tonight, howling and whistling in off the sea. It was this type of night now. Am I setting the scene for you? Don't miss the Don Mars Haunting production at the Wyndham's Theatre in the West End from the 16th of January. You enjoy your peace and quiet now, and we'll see you again.